money. Let's talk money. I don't have your money. I know I'd be a lot happier with some extra cash. Is this about money? Obviously, this is all about money. Oh, man, we got bills to pay, buddy. <laughs> with practical tips and a focus on scripture, let's talk money. With Dave and Reb. From more than enough, real conversations about money for real people. Let's talk money. Are you ready to talk money, Reb? I'm ready to talk money. I caught you. I know, I'm reading my Bible. You're reading your Bible. (laughs) You're not quite ready, but that's okay because we're coming into the show and I always do some housekeeping to start with the show. So welcome to the show. This is the show where Dave and Reb talk about the hard issues of money. Around money. Uh, I'm going to do a shout out, special shout out, Kate Hubble, if you're listening, you're like our, one of our avid listeners. Kate's got it, right? She's on it. Yeah. Yeah. She's on it. She loves listening to the podcast. She goes, oh, I got it. I got it. You know. Her husband is is there too. Oh yeah, I know, I know. Kate, hi, Kate and Nick. So <laughs> anyway, I just like she talks about her podcast to me all the time, and it's very nice, and she's very encouraging. So hi, Kate. Anyway. Okay, there you go. So shout out to Kate. <laughs> I, while we're doing shout outs, want to shout out to our sponsor of today's show, NotMine.ca. That's the website. The organization is Financial Discipleship Canada. You might have heard me talk about that when we have a guest Ray Borg on the show. Mm-hmm. He's a regular on the show. So the good folks at, at NotMine.ca, long. I mean, that is a resource. If you're th- looking for Christian content about money and, and to really help you dig into some some of the hard issues around money, notmine.ca is a great place to start. Um, not too overwhelming, but lots of information there. So thank you, Financial Discipleship Canada, for sponsoring today's show. Um, we have like a lot of things on the agenda, I think. For today. For today. Yes. So, so I'm like... Let's get into it. Let's get into All right. It. So, like, happy summer, everybody. Mm-hmm. So, I hope everybody's having an enjoyable one, even in the midst of feeling stressed, maybe about your finances. So, Not but we're stressed. here. We're it's here. Summer. Everybody just lets it go. Okay. Everyone's letting it go and just letting it pile up on the credit cards. I don't know. Maybe you've had a plan and you're sticking to the plan. So that's Amen. really man. That would be great. Preach it, sister. Um, so on today's show, we want to encourage you to come to our financial fitness seminar mm-hmm. and how we are actually tackling the topic of the financial fitness seminar, which we hold four times a year. In January, April, June, and September online, Dave does it Mm -hmm. an hour and a half, two hours. You can sign up on our website, morethanenough.ca. Click the, go in the right top corner, you'll see financial fitness seminar and you click on that and you can register that way. It's free to you. It's free to people you know, maybe you don't need it, but you know some some people who could and you can have uh, maybe a, 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 not a watch party, but gather in somebody's house and you could get online um, and come to the seminar because it is a great first step towards um, financial health and management. Um, The phrase came to me uh, that we often hear is getting your financial house in order, but that kind of feels yucky and we want to i don't know like, i don't know it feels good to me well when, yeah but it, mean, it means it's one of those like, things that sound good and when you get there you know it's good but it's the journey of getting there i know difficult. but in my head the words are more like oh you terrible people you mm-hmm. are you need to get your house in order and yeah. i don't want people to feel that way i want people to maybe think, that's because most people say that just as they're thinking about death and as they're oh, thinking about yeah you know, well yeah and it's hard and it's you know not not nice feelings. But anyway, these are the first steps. And today we're going to talk kind of like a high level of why do we talk about what we're talking about Mm. in the financial fitness seminar? We have it on our YouTube channel as well. Mm. We have the full thing that was recorded in 2019. David and I uh, both are leading that. And then we have a a part of that also available and it's just the debt snowball and you can just watch that. Mm. And I'm going to have the links in the show notes today, but I wanted to ask Dave and pick his brain after all these years of doing the financial fitness show because or financial fitness seminar, you have done this for years. In fact, Lynn Fraser and um, Ken Decker Mm -hmm. did it years before you did it. Those are a couple of people that were kind of in the genesis of of more than enough, but also Lynn's passion to to see people become financially healthy and to see them, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, think about investing in debt. And so Ken is a real estate agent. They they do a show called... um, um, 
Inside track. Inside track. Yes, I had to think about that for a minute. So, so yeah. So actually, they, following our show here, they, it's they on CHRI. were, uh, you know, they 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 started very similar. I mean, obviously, over the years, things have changed, and the seminar looks a little different now. But the idea of doing a seminar on a regular basis for the community to say, "Let's get our house in order," um, is is a big deal. And that was like that was twenty years ago. So you know, things have certainly changed, and we uh, we. Get to talk about money i think a little bit more different a little bit in a different context than 20 years ago because right. now we are feeling the pain but i feel like dave can actually do this financial fitness seminar in his sleep so it's just like second nature it's mm. just part of his subconscious now i think he's done it for so long mm. but i did when i was considering this because people keep calling and saying how do we do this how mm. do we live on on when the prices are so high how do we save money when the prices are so high how do we and we keep coming back to s basics mm. you know basic scriptural principles and basic uh Financial things that we've learned that are not rocket science that are prevalent all over the internet. You can find any of this teaching mm. in so many places. It's not just us that are doing it. And um, But I wanted to ask you some questions around it. But before I do that, I wanted to read, and we're going to do this for two shows, today's show and next show. We're right. going to talk about the Financial Fitness Seminar and some of the things that are in there and why they're in there. Um and what is is of good what's the good purpose mm -hmm. behind it but philippians 4 we've read this before it's not uncommon we hear this verse um we've talked about it before philippians 4 13 it's very short paul writes i can do all things through christ who strengthens me we use it in all kind of contexts mm -hmm. as christians but i want to read the verse before it like the whole section it, it's talking about rejoicing in the lord um, be anxious for nothing, pray, um, God's peace will guard your heart, think on what is good and noble and pure and lovely, and meditate on those things. And um, then he goes into talking about how the folks in Philippi um, had taken care of him. And then he says, I know I'm going to, the reason I was looking at my Bible, I was like, I don't know if I like the New King James Version exactly. So I, be, because I like. Okay, pause. What version are you going so to So actually, I on my phone, I have called it up. It's the actually the UK version of the NIV. Okay. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And then he adds, yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, there's, there's a lot actually in those few verses. But as we talk about the financial fitness seminar, what's in there and why it's in there, I want us to have this underlying understanding that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Right. So no matter what part of the journey you're on today, you can learn contentment because Christ is with you and in you. And he promises to walk with you in any circumstances. He promises to be ahead of you, behind you, before you. And sometimes we forget the simplicity of that. Mm. Sometimes we forget to meditate on, on that good truth that he is with us, even when the finances feel very stressful. And he has a way to lead and guide us through in and through those things mm -hmm. and i and and we're talking about some foundational things this morning and and i think this is really key in terms of foundational right so garden of eden what was the first uh, you know i'm going to say untruth that eve kind of received and that was is that 
wow, the, the tree looks like it's good to eat, and then God's holding out on me. That was what, what <laughs> Satan tempted her <laughs> you, with, right? You said this on the show this summer once before. And, and it you comes know. back, right? So Paul is now writing in Philippians, and really what he's saying is, is that my relationship with the Father being restored and reconciled through Jesus Christ. Now I can I can be content no matter the circumstances. I and and that's such a powerful um, principle, but it's also something that we have to really work at. Like this isn't just oh it just happens organically, right? I mean, Adam and Eve, if anybody was going to make it happen organically, it was Adam and <laughs> Eve, right? They only knew God the presence. They were in the garden prepared for them. So, like, the, this is the perfect setting for them to trust the word of the Lord mm-hmm. in every circumstance. And yet here, you know, they realize that, oh, is God holding out on me? And he, and here Paul is actually saying, no, he's not holding out. He's not. He's right? not holding. You can learn contentment. You can learn to be content in plenty and in want. And, and regardless of the circumstance, Regard- regardless yeah. of the situation around you, coming into the presence of God. And, and that takes effort. That takes intentionality. It's, it's it takes, relationship. It takes it's, relationship. It's learning to hear his voice. It's learning to love him it's learning to see how he loves you like there's and it also takes community right yes. again we, we talk about community a lot uh, because you know again in the isolation and and maybe i'm a guy maybe it's just me and i'll, I'll i won't make the generalization but you know my relationship with god is is spurred on and pushed when i'm in community with other right. people who are actively engaged in, in in growing their relationship with God. And I get challenged and we get to work it out. And when I'm all alone, I know you like to be all alone. I do like to be alone. But me, I'm like, you know, okay, I've read my Bible. I did my thing. I know that you're there, Lord. But, but I feel I the energy of engagement with the Lord in community. I know. I know. <laughs> That's, yeah, this is very. I'm just laughing because I was up early this morning alone, and I was, I was like, I was up early too, but, but you were. Alone. I, I was taking more joy in the yeah, aloneness. Yes, I think. Yes, you were. <laughs> but but so it's there. Just there's. Oh, I'm stumbling over my words, but there's so much that he's mm. saying here, and and the community has helped him. You know, there are there are times and places where people have come alongside Paul and mm-hmm. built him up. He talks about it all the time. And we in can his look letters. at our own lives. And, and we do. And, and yes. again, see that happen. But and- but I'm just thinking, as you said that, you know, even coming to the financial fitness seminar, even though it's online, there is a little community that's come. Mm-hmm. Our eFit program, which is a six month online, uh, self-direct, not online, but self-directed program has monthly coaching with, with other people, with mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's just saying, oh man, if you are thinking, I want to be in a place where I want to get my house in order, like get my finances, get like, at least know what's happening, mm-hmm. then find the people who are also doing that. Find the people who are, um, are tracking and eager to learn or in your church or your community or ask your pastor or or more than enough call us we have got places where there's community that we develop and i will say this it's not easy right like (laughs) we're talking about money and then again when we talk about community and money uh, right away i know there's there's some of you that are thinking there there is no way that i am going to share my money stuff with anybody right like uh, like that's really right. personal and and totally understand that and i don't think that's really what we're we're saying here this isn't what uh, what we're saying here is is that when we get into isolation, and then I think this is what Paul's saying, and I think this is that when we're in isolation, there is a danger that we'll, we'll, we'll have a distorted vi- vi- vision of the truth, and, and there's no context for, am I, am, I, am I hearing this right? Am I seeing this right? Am I, am I doing this right? And so that's where community comes in, and... and you and can. and and comes up with practical ideas. So, which leads us into the first question that we ask in a financial fitness seminar is, "What's your big why? Mm-hmm. Why are you here?" And then we hear from each other about what's motivating us. So, can you 
and to actually ask, why have you put that in the seminar? Why is it the big thing? Why is it the first thing you ask people? Well, and, and because, you know, what we're talking about, there's there's this foundation of if, if you show up to anything, and I don't care what it is, if you show up to anything and you have zero expectation, you, you, mm-hmm. you don't know why you're there, you don't know what you're <laughs> going to get out of it, you don't know, you don't know, then I can I can guarantee you that – the the what you will get out of it um one of two things will happen you'll get nothing out of it and you'll think oh, that was a waste of time or you'll you'll have a surprise where you're like i didn't know what i was showing up for and i had no expectation and oh my goodness like this was transformation so you know one of those two things are going to happen to a certain extent right so when we get to the financial fitness seminar um, you know, one of the things I learned many, many years ago a- a- is, is that uh, when we have a dream, mm-hmm. one of the first things to, to, to actually first steps to seeing your dream become a reality is you have to share it. Right. Right. Like you have to articulate it. Right. The more you share it, the more you articulate it, the more clear you become right. on what that is. And and I don't know the psychology or all of that. I just see that as an observation. So I say, you know, when you're coming to a financial fitness seminar, an event, or you're coming to 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 us at more than enough and we're having an interview at the beginning, we're, we we want to know why you're here. Like, what is it that you want to get out of this time? And if you don't know, we're actually going to pause there a little bit and push a little bit and say, okay, there are three real motivators that we know about that will get you to the financial fitness seminar to get you to really do anything. Because these are, again, generic principles that that happen. Uh, so the first one is pain. Pain is a motivator. Right. It will motivate us to do things, to to change. To it, It'll motivate us, right? Like it's, it pushes us. So, so pain is number one. So pain could be a motivator. I'm in pain financially. Dave, I've come to the seminar. I want some help to get rid of the pain. Okay, that's great. Um, you know, motivator number two is pleasure. Hey, you know what? And there's all kinds of, of ways that we're motivated by pleasure. And again, how does that affect our finances? Well, hey, I'm having lots of fun, but I don't know if I can keep this up, right? You know, uh, you know I'm not quite sure what's going on. But, but again, or there's some things, you know, for example, we just came back from a, a little holiday and, you know, that's pleasure. And I want to go on another one. But how do I get there? Here right, I am, right. and I'm motivated by the pleasure we've just experienced. But and I want to do it again. But there are barriers in a way, or whatever it is. So so there's pleasure that's a motivator, and those are general, generic. Again, we can apply those across our life. We like to apply it, of course, in the area of finances. But you can apply that as a motivator for anything that we do and spend time at. Right. Right. The third motivator, and this is the one that we really want to get some focus on and and get in and that is purpose right because when we understand that i am motivated by purpose then pain and pleasure actually take a back seat as motivators and so the purpose that we get and I, again i'll use the example of of an athlete you know i want to run even even i i uh uh, I'm going to say a non-professional athlete, right? right? Yeah. I want to run a half marathon, right? That's purpose at work. I just stated my purpose right. is, is I want to run a half marathon. Now, pain and pleasure take the back seat because I'm going to train. That's painful. Uh, I actually might experience a runner's high while I'm training, and that's pleasurable, and that actually makes me, it motivates me to, to train, train more, more. Yeah. right? And so you can see just in that small example, my stated purpose is now truly my North Star. It's what's guiding me, and pain and pleasure take a back seat. And what's happened in the area of finances is often we put pain and pleasure in the front seat and purpose right. in the back right. seat. And so now we're just driving all over the place or we're moving all over the place, chasing pain and pleasure, but we don't have that North Star. We don't have that, I'm shooting for that thing up there. And that is what's going to guide my decisions. And so that's why it's so significant when you talk about it in the seminar is so that people have an understanding that purpose and direction is like an 
like an underlying target. Like any, and, For sure. and if you don't know what that is and you might be listening thinking, I don't know what my, my purpose or the purpose of my money is, or you might, you, you may not know any of those things. And those are the, some things that you can start exploring so that right. you can literally stick them on your fridge. Right. And um, this doesn't have to be a, a life purpose, although <laughs> it could be right. It could be like, I want to retire at 50 right. and I'm 30. So now we have, we actually have, oh, this is my, you know, I'm going to start mapping this out. What do I need to right, do to, do to, to be there. able to retire yes. at 50? I mean, again, that's, the purpose kind of plays into that. And then I would always ask the question, so when you retire, what are you going to do? Are you gonna do? do? <laughs> You're going to need a purpose again. So uh, are you shooting for something like retirement at 50 that really doesn't, that's that's halfway, and right? Then, and then when we, as as Christ followers, we, we draw in God's purpose to that storyline. So um, as a follower of Christ, we, like what is God saying about your money or your life? Um, but- this is the start. Like, so we're throwing out all kinds of things, mm-hmm. but this is why, because it's, it keeps you on the path. And one thing we talk about in our unleashed seminars, we talk about purpose. We have a whole, mm-hmm. we talk about purpose for like, it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. like an hour and a half. And, um, only one th- an hour and a half, only it's an only hour. An oh, hour yeah. Hour hour. Okay. Um, but, but one thing that has come to me is pain and pleasure are things we experience along the way. Sure. Right. Like, so, and you're, and the, and you're not always moving the marker, although, you know, life happens. And sometimes you're like, oh man, I got sick when I was 40 for five years and I can't retire when I'm 50. Right. Absolutely. So, so, right. so, so then you're, so then life happens and it shifts. But again, we want to do that in a place where we can talk about it with others, be in community and, you know, and recognizing again, different stages in life and, and re, re-looking at and this is why pain purpose and pleasure when we talk about these we're talking about them in the context of motivation yes right yeah um and so you know the motivation is and and you know again i'm just going to dig a little bit into to pain as as an example pain when we experience that physically in our bodies what is it, our body is telling us pay attention mm-hmm. something Something's not right and you need to change it. That's what happens physically in us. But that is also what happens in our finances. If we're in pain financially, it's like a change needs to be made because you're going to continue to be in pain and motivated by that pain. And so what is the change? And here's where, you know, it's another way of saying, you know, hey, what's the the purpose? Well, I got to get rid of this pain. Good. But what happens after you <laughs> the, get rid of right. the pain? That's where we want to go into purpose. And that's sometimes very difficult to think through. You might be in pain and you're like, all I can think about is getting rid of the pain. And that's good. Like, again, and, and, and that might be the that stage. might be it. Yeah. And then we go, OK, so now and I, this is where the change happens. I've reduced the pain. I've done something. And, and you know, time has went by. And, and so now I can actually have some margin to think about purpose and what happens next. Right. And, and that's why I say, you know, it is a guiding North Star. And I love the picture that, you know, there's always movement there. Like the you know, right. there's movement and there's reevaluation right. and there's right. context that I mean, and you're always talking about money being a current. It it's mm-hmm. they call it currency for a reason, right? It's you yeah. know, your your life and your wouldn't you some of us would just like to let's make the decision, it's done, it's cut in stone, we can check the box, we've we figured mm-hmm. out the purpose and this is where we're going. But life doesn't happen like check boxes. Right. And so. I think it's really important. Uh like I love that picture of Purpose being in the front seat, yeah, right, and and pain and pleasure being in the back seats, and recognizing that everybody's in the car, like <laughs> right, like these right. are motivators yeah. that that are in the car, and they're in play all the and time, and they're in play yeah. and all the time, yeah, right? because because you have the bigger direction or it's purpose, like the let's kids say. in the back seat yeah. <laughs> but you're like okay you guys settle there? down stop stop yeah. stop like you know and, and there, you can so. have an overarching big purpose but along the way you have smaller ones and we actually talk we're not going to talk about it today but there is uh um, blogs on the website about smarter and smart goals right and and it breaks it down for you as an acronym of how you can set small goals for yourself is part of the bigger one but you right. guys can go read b- about that but wait Okay. So I want to talk because we ha- have only a couple minutes is, yes. is our acronym FACE. We also say it's empowering to face your finances. Right. And we talk about that in the seminar. Why do we say that? Why is if 
Right. Yeah. So the idea here is, is once we recognize that pain, pleasure, and purpose are motivators, step number one is actually doing a self-assessment. We need to face our finances. That's why right. we use the uh, the acrostic, you know, financial awareness creates empowerment. Right. So helping us to make that decision, we can't, and, and again, I'll use the physical metaphor. If you have a broken leg, your pain in the broken leg is, is, is going to restrict you from getting from point A to point B, from right. walking there. Right. You need to deal with the pain. And right. this is why, you know, again, so financial awareness creates empowerment. Hey, I've got a broken leg. I got to recognize that. I got to deal with that. I may put a splint on it. I may recognize that, you know, to get to my destination walking, it's going to take me a lot longer. It's going to, maybe I have to get a tool or find a, a you know, like there's, it changes right. the question. But if you don't take that self-analysis and you think, there's my goal and I'm just going to get there, frustration sets in, right. setbacks, more. You actually have to know the, the nitty gritty of it's, like, where is it more, how much money's coming in and how much is going out and how, how do right. I need, what do, what's happening? Yeah. So, so you think about that in terms of walking with a broken leg. Sometimes you actually need to pause and go, I, I, I know the goal is right there. Like, I know that that's yeah. the direction I'm going to get, but I actually need to deal with this thing now. Right. And, and so, or, you know, again, maybe it's a sprain. And so you just wrap the thing up, you put your boot <laughs> on tight and you move forward. Which and, you do all the time. You know, and you're... that's, again, it, you know, there's no wrong answer to no, that. No, right? true. But if we never take... The, the, the step of financial awareness. Financial awareness gives you the power to say, what do I need to do so that mm -hmm. I can move towards Forward. my purpose, my purpose? And so yeah. it's so essential to recognize those motivators, pain, purpose, and pleasure, but also to face your finances in particular and, and allow yourself to say, I got to make a plan that works from that. And that's where, you know, we only have a few minutes left, but that's where sometimes having someone from the outside is is immense is almost a necessity again i'll use that metaphor if i have a broken leg sometimes i can't treat the broken right. leg myself i need somebody to come from the outside to actually help me do that but i think that's also what we're trying to do with the financial fitness seminar we're mm -hmm. trying to be like if if you're nervous or scared or like i don't want people looking at my numbers or it's a mm -hmm. privacy thing like i we understand and we get it we all have different comfort comfort levels um we might feel shame and guilt and you can go back and listen to amanda's right. uh, show with us a couple weeks ago on that um but that's what we're trying to do with financial. We're, we're trying to be there for you so that you can start facing your finances in a way that's safe and comfortable and um, and introduce you to that. We're going to talk about like it's a bit of a yeah. map, right? So we're looking yeah. at a map and we're kind of saying this is the beginning of the map. Yeah, this is we're going to get to the next. Step yeah. The and next on show. the next week's show, we're going to keep going with the nitty gritty of why we do what we do. So why don't you pray? Well, Lord, we do thank you for your grace and thank you that you know the journey, you know the path, you know the way. And thank you for the encouraging words from Paul that say, I've learned and we can learn to be content in all of these different circumstances and, and just give us the, the presence and your power in that in Christ's name. Amen. Thanks to notmine.ca for sponsoring today's show. And we'll talk to you next time when we talk money. Let's Talk Money is a division of More Than Enough Financial Fitness, where God is transforming hearts and bringing hope for today and freedom for tomorrow. For more information or to comment on today's show, please visit morethanenough.ca.